Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today I'm here with my friend and fellow astrologer, Sidereal Babylonian ancient astrologer, Trifon Nikolov, for the month of August 2024. Hello, Trifon. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here again. So you can hear some more uh, comments on the coming times. Uh, but first some comments on the past times because we had some very important events in uh, the days in the last weeks uh, you know what I'm talking about? no <laughs> the attempt for assassination that happened in the USA of course against the former president so uh, I have warned you in the last reading that there will be Mars and Algo and Uranus alignment. Now it's interesting to observe that um, as America, USA, is much related uh, in everyone's mind or in its own vision to democracy and freedom. Uh, and the very planet of those topics is Uranus, because when Uranus was uh, discovered uh, very soon, uh, there was uh, the American Revolution, there was the French Revolution, and in general, the age of revolution started uh, fight for freedom. And so Uranus is related to USA. And in this, uh, one of the versions of uh, the horoscope of USA uh, have uh, Taurus rising. And this, of course, is in the sidereal plane astrology that I'm practicing, which is the ancient tradition of the creators of astrology. So what else to follow, actually, right? So, but we have new plans. And so when when we have uh, Taurus rising, um, you know uh, which sign is the 10th sign from Taurus? Aquarius. Exactly, this is Aquarius. So the 10th house of USA is Aquarius. And the 10th house represents also the rulers, the rulers, the people in high positions, and so on. So Uranus Mars with Algo was actually very uh, logically actually to, to show something like that. Uh, so, of course, it's a rare conjunction. It can potentially happen once in, in the cycle of Uranus, the entire cycle of Uranus. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, not so much uh, away from a century long. So um, there is logic. There is logic that this happened. But I, and the last time I also uh, said something else. I said that because Jupiter yes, is yes. also present. Whatever evils are signified by this conjunction, they will be avoided. Uh, there will be help from Jupiter and so on. And so now this is like a fine example for, for everyone to see the influence of Jupiter. What, what is the difference between, between life and death? Still, there is this situation that is very scary. But uh, the threatened uh, former president, he survived. So... Jupiter was there. And so, uh, in a way, we are still in this situation because those planets are still in sign. Uh, this will be so until 28th of August when Mars will leave the sign Taurus. I will make some more comments about that because it's very important. But... Uh, after all, the, the very conjunction between Uranus, Algo, and Mars is already passed. So now we will have some other things coming. Um, also, in Europe, uh, there was... Uh, and still, there are a lot of fires, and also not only in Europe. So the... There are fires everywhere. There, there is a great heat. There is a record temperatures. And uh, let's connect everything again to Mars. Mars is... Uh, he was. He is now going out. Uh, but he was in the lunar mansion called Kritika in India. 
Fire. Which is ruled by the sun. And even in the in the Vedic pantheon, the god of fire is ruling this uh, lunar mansion. Agni. Called Agni. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a Sanskrit word with which gives the word for fire for many nations, actually. Uh, and so, so there was like very fiery combinations actually in this guy. Uh, so at least we can just hope that this was uh, the most uh, intense. Uh, but having in mind uh, how many other aspects are coming, let's not be so sure. What to talk about first, I even wonder. Oh, before you start, I want to tell people that uh, Tripun is offering two promotional readings for us for the next two weeks. Anyone uh, viewer of this channel, I'll put the link below. One is a 60-minute reading with Tripun using ancient sidereal, Babylonian, and ancient Greek methods. Uh, while the other one is, and it can be on any topic for 60 minutes, or his uh, signature reading about money and wealth particularly for you in your personal life, looking with primary directions uh, for long periods, like at how the financial situation will be in your life and uh, what are sources of good financial stability for you. If you'd like a personal reading with Trifon, again, I'm putting the link below in the description. Okay, so we have a couple of important events this month. And uh, one of them is the condition of Mercury. Now, all of you have heard many times about Mercury retrograde and so on. And this is one more time Mercury uh, doing the same movement. Very soon, a couple of days, uh, he will become retrograde. Uh, actually, the phase of his retrogradation begins even now because all the stations of the planets, their influence actually starts seven days before they actually happen. So we can say that the influence of the retrograde Mercury is starting right now, as we speak, because there are seven days till then. So, <clears throat> 5th of August. Until then, many other things will happen. But uh, Mercury retrograde, of course, it will make uh, many people to go back to unfinished uh, businesses. Depends on what Mercury exactly rules in your charts. Uh, already Mercury is weakened by being invisible since 21st of July. This must have been felt by everybody around 21st of July. I talked about that in the last uh, video. And so now this Mercury invisible and soon becoming retrograde portends not so effective time for people related to Mercury, like traders, like intellectuals. Uh, but Mercury also is related to, to the entire humanity because he rules uh, human science, uh, science with human shape. I'm talking about Virgo and Gemini, of course. So, in general, this is when people will <laughs> slow down, obviously. The explanation this time is the summer. However, uh, before doing so, and later in the stations, uh, Mercury will move through interesting places in the heavens. Let's talk about that. In the end of the sidereal sign Cancer and uh, close to the end of the constellation Cancer, uh, where Mercury is, there are also other factors. On the upper side, there is the head of the lion, uh, where in the skies are depicted the jaws of the lion uh, with different stars. They have the nature of Mars. And on the lower side, below Cancer, constellation is another great in length constellation, which is called Hydra. Hydra formation Greek means 
I guess some of you know it means water. And so this constellation, I have <clears throat> talked about it. It's, of course, related to water, as the name implies, but is depicted as a kind of a dragon. Hydra. There is a legend about Hercules and the Lernaean Hydra. Uh, and so Mercury is now there. Later he will go in Leo. Then he will go uh, back in the Hydra. And there he will rise. So I'm, re I'm reminding you. Right in the end of Cancer, Leo above, the Hydra below, this is where Mercury will arise. So they're like very like monstrous, I would say, uh, images. And what does this mean? It means that, um, let's begin from afar, there will be a greater danger of uh, things like greed, deception, manipulation as the end of uh, as the very place where the hydro is in this uh, combination of constellations the ancients are saying it's related to greed this place uh, and so danger of various manipulations on, uh, based on finances finances because Mercury, you know, he can be very manipulative as well. This is one side of the matter. And it is for those who are operating mostly on the more material level in their lives. People who do not have like uh, uh, very much like spiritual progress. But it's a general warning as well for people. Uh, so when Mercury is there, this is in the end of August, when he makes these movements. Right now he's there, he initiates the processes, uh, later turning retrograde, and uh, turning direct 28th of August in this place, and he will be also rising in the last day of August, 31st of August. Becoming visible becomes visible as well. So he will do two things, turning direct 28th of August, and then he will rise 31st of August. And the situation of all the people related to Mercury will improve, but also they may face uh, challenging situations because uh, this place in the sky is like that. There can be conflicts, there can be deceptions, there can be struggle with desires, Mercury, you know, rules Virgo and Gemini, uh, those rising signs in Sidereal, which are considered in the Western astrology to be related mostly by with um, Libra and uh, Cancer signs. Uh, so, I believe this will be potentially even some, a moment of some financial issues with certain organizations, not on global scale, I hope. On um, political level as well, and because we know that there is a lot of uh, need of balance and communication and negotiation, Mercury rules those things. Uh, but in any negotiations, for example, about peace, Mercury being in the, in the jaw of the lion and uh, the jaw of the hydra and so on, I don't think this is a very good sign. There will be very low intentions uh, and bad results. Oh. Oh, better to focus negotiations later in September, just saying. Uh, also, uh, talking earlier about the fires, right now Venus is in this place that I'm talking about. Okay this moment and Venus is the watery planet so now Venus will bring more water in short this can be even disastrous somewhere but it's a blessing in other places in addition people who are ruled by Venus in these days until I mean uh, like today and tomorrow 
those later venous change, changes position. Uh, this can indicate uh, also challenging conditions for younger and beautiful women, and in general for women as well. It's more challenging period about love matters in general as well. It is the moment when women can be like more tricky, deceptive, or greedy. Boys, take care. I know that there are not many boys who are listening, but whoever is there, right? <laughs> so uh, this is the moment of activation of uh, women who are trying to, uh, yeah, to use others, the so-called gold diggers. Is their time, Vina? The so-called gold diggers. Is this because of Hydra? Yes, because of Hydra, definitely. My moon is there, but the opposite for me. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> I'm not commenting you right now, right? So whoever <laughs> listens, he will exclude himself from this. Okay. This <laughs> for, for some time, at least for some time. Uh, and he will look uh, if he has like strong positions of Jupiter in the chart, on ninth house, etc. Because uh, if you have strong Jupiter, if you have Ninth house, which is the house of principles and morality and religion, then the situation is changing. Mm -hmm. Then, if you have such uh, positions, the activation of this place in the sky in anyone's chart uh, will mean that uh, the first steps for spiritual awakening are being taken. Because uh, this is a lunar marathon called the Shlesha in India, ruled by Mercury. Again, we're talking about Mercury, as you can see. Mercury has some strength in this place. And uh, they say that because it's ruled by Mercury, it's related to the mind. And it's a place of transformation of the mind. So this place in the heavens gives potential for spiritual transformation for those who are ready. So, so from whore to saint <laughs> syndrome, <laughs> kind of. Yes, you can say so. So, uh, especially the last degrees, the last two degrees of the constellation and the sign, uh, cancer of Zivirius. Because they are a little bit more related to Jupiter. So, on this are like details, important details. And I believe that uh, your moon is there, right? And so, Venus right now is in this place. But uh, the good and the bad sides definitely will be expressed. And uh, on the 1st of August, early in the morning, or late at night in USA, yeah, like very early, like after the evening, let's say 1st of August, is when Venus enters the sidereal sign Leo. He's already interacting with some stars of Leo, some stars of Cancer, some stars of Hydra, as I explained, right? But technically, she enters Leo 1st of August. And I remember there, is, there are images uh, from the ancients, like from Mesopotamia, of uh, Venus uh, surrounded by lions. Also in Egypt, the goddess Hathor. Uh, and so she's related somehow more positively with this constellation. Only if Saturn was not on the opposite side right now. Uh, because uh, Venus entering Leo slowly will go forward and it will be okay all the time until 19th of August. And there we arrive at the big challenge for the month, which will shape probably the most of the, the month for everyone. Uh, because on the 19th of August, there will be an exact great configuration forming in the sky, which uh, will influence. Uh, directly half of the people on, on the planet and indirectly all the rest. It's a very powerful combination because it is exact. What I mean, Venus 
will stay in Lima, but it will be exactly to Saturn, uh, who is in Aquarius. And in the middle distance between them, uh, in the order of the size, uh, will stay Jupiter. This means he will make squares to Saturn and Venus simultaneously. And all this is exact degrees. When it is happening. Uh, modern astrologers are calling this configuration Tau Square. Only one planet misses to so that we can have like great cross configuration. Uh, and so what it means to have this combination Jupiter challenging Saturn and Venus and Venus in opposition to Saturn, Venus is square to Jupiter, all this happening at the same time. The degrees are the 22nd degrees, respectively Venus in Leo, Saturn in Aquarius, Jupiter in Taurus, so 22nd degrees and some minutes for each of those planets. Now, the ancient rules are uh, such that uh, if we have to judge which planet is stronger to judge who is uh, giving the final results we will see that Saturn is the strongest Saturn is reflecting Jupiter with square and Venus with opposition which means that people who are uh, ruled by Jupiter and Venus those who have the ascendant uh, Pisces and Sagittarius in Sagittarius. This is for Jupiter ruled people. And those are Aries and Capricorn in Western astrology. But also those ruled by Venus. Taurus rising in Sidereal signs, Libra rising in Sidereal signs, Western astrology, Gemini and Scorpio. They will suffer. They will suffer because they will have to meet the limitations and the responsible side of Saturn. The difference is that Jupiter ruled people will face this more as circumstances and necessities, but Venus ruled people will face this more as opposition of other people and as uh, great disappointments of different sorts, like in love, for example, or friendship. In general, the, the support that they need. Uh, but uh, let's also say that Saturn will check on those people, those ruled by Jupiter, whether they um, are morally sound, whether they are not making any mistakes, or if they are not seeing something, they will have to see it. Because Jupiter is involved and Jupiter is the truth. In this case, uh, involved with Saturn, those people have, may have to see some really negative uh, uh, things and truths about uh, around them and even about themselves. About Venus situation on the 19th of August, uh, it is about uh, the universal principle of love, of course, balance and justice as well. And uh, if people are pursuing their desires relentlessly and without taking care of morality, or if they are not uh, giving attention to the realities of the material world as well, uh, who are creating stability in the future, so then in that time, Saturn will be forced to show on the real situation and to stop them. So now I'm reminding you, all of you, because everyone will feel this time in some ways, uh, I'm reminding all of you that Saturn is compared to uh, a father, sometimes benevolent, sometimes not, but always trying to protect. So when Saturn gives uh, certain limitations, it is always for a reason, always for good. Of course, the children, the humanity, uh, they cannot understand this. 
you know, in the right very moment when this is going on. Only later, after a long time, it will be clear that it is like that. Uh, the, the forming of those configurations will start earlier. I mean, this is the 19th of August is only the culmination of this process. It's very powerful, again, because it's exact aspects. Uh, but up to like 10 or 7 days before that, people will start to, to see where things are going. So I'm just warning you about the appearance of certain events. In short, the middle of the middle 10 days of August are very challenging. Let's just say it like this. For many, many people. Even there are other things going on. There are also some exclusions. Some, some of us will be not so much involved. Let's see what happens. There will be another session in the month. 14th of August. Jupiter will make conjunction with Mars. Okay, um, this means that, of course, aggression, wars, etc., will be on the rise in that time and in the days before. And on this very day, there can be greater violence and dangers throughout the world in general, especially for those who are ruled by Jupiter. I already mentioned who are those. But on the opposite side, all those who are ruled by Mars like, you know, security forces, or people who have uh, rising sign areas or Scorpio in Sidereo, but uh, Horus and Sagittarius in Western astrology. Those people, because their ascendant lord will receive the aspect of Jupiter, they will have to face important truths, sometimes even critical in their lives, but also they will have great problems. So for them, it's mostly functional time. So for those who are ruled by Mars, as you can see, the month is not so bad, after all. Also, on the very day of the 19th of August, when this mighty configuration happens between Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, at the same time, something else is forming. Mercury, in, on, in the same day, literally, makes conjunction with the Sun in Leo. Now, for the people who are ruled by Mercury and the Sun, this will be, a, of course, a breath of fresh air. Uh, because people ruled by Mercury, I'm, re I'm reminding you, uh, Virgo and Gemini in Sidereo, they will have some also very positive time. They will be able to, to be successful, uh, to have uh, understanding, and in general, to have a very good day, mostly. Sometimes, maybe, because of the other people's problems. Possible. Or at least they will be able to navigate better, to navigate better in those circumstances that are happening around. And the people who are ruled by the sun, of course, those are the people who have the Urising in Sidereo, but Virgo in Western astrology. Uh, so those people will be able to rely a lot on good advice and on their ratio. Mercury will provide information that is crucial and it will give them resources and the freedom to navigate in the right direction. Because Mercury, when we look at Leo rising, we see that Mercury rose the 11th and the second house, two places. So it's good for them. As you can see, uh, Leo rising, Gemini rising, Virgo rising, uh, they have a little better situation. Of course, it will be complex for, every, for everybody, but we already know and also those ruled by Mars, right? Uh, also, people who are ruled by Saturn, what to say about them? Because uh, their ascendant lord is going against Venus and is making square with Jupiter 
in many ways, they will be recipients of the blessings of Jupiter and Venus. But in, in a, I can say, good price, big price. There will be moral conflicts, there will be uh, love problems and problems with friends. But they will be able to overcome whatever opposition they have, if it's necessary for them. After all, this is Saturn. And so, as you can see, only looking from the, those configurations in the sky, uh, many uh, the the month will be of the sort that I was sometimes talking about this Chinese curse from the legend. Let you live in interesting times. So this will be a very interesting month for everyone. Sometimes too much. Uh, and so there are many other things going on. Of course. Let's look at some of them. On the 17th of August, the sun goes in Leo. Surprise. This is the sidereal sign. And when the sun enters Leo, it's 17th of August. Good for people with Leo rising. Uh, around the same time, depends where you live. It can be 15th, 14th, 17th, 18th. Depends. Let's just say in most places, uh, between 15th and 18th is rising the brightest star in the skies. This is Sirius. It was considered the beginning of the year of ancient Egypt. And it is important exactly how he will rise to see what the future holds. But... Uh, also, by some uh, spiritual masters, it is said that it is the beginning of the spiritual year. So in short, if you know exactly when Sirius will rise in your place between 15th to 18th of August, it is a good time to start some spiritual practice, for example, or some intellectual beginning. It is good. Sirius is even good for the matters of love. Or if you want to check someone's loyalty. If you if people need loyalty, Sirius maybe will provide for some of them. After all, it's the star of the dog. And the main symbol of the dog, the main quality of the dog, we know what it is. It's loyalty. Uh, so... Always, August is important because of this rising. Now, in addition, uh, this situation of Venus and Jupiter may be not so great for some countries. Venus is um, related to uh, Switzerland, to Ukraine, France. So there can be issues. Uh, of course, this situation of Venus can indicate even some financial troubles in the world. Uh, why I'm saying this? Because Venus rules Taurus, the sign of finances. Uh, in addition, we have many planets in Taurus. And there, earlier than those aspects, we have one important moment. Only days till then, five days, on the 4th of August, Mars will join Aldebaran, the main star of Taurus. You can try and watch it in the evenings, in conjunction how Mars is aligning with the main star of Taurus. They will stop, they will stay close by two reddish stars. This is how they will. And so the eye of the bull, Aldebaran with Mars. The ancients are saying that uh, this star, in part, has the nature of Mars. And so Mars will go only stronger when he is aligned with the star. This only foretells that there will be greater military action and uh, greater empowerment of the people related to Mars. Um, but uh, also other... Uh, think about this star is that it signifies the wealth of the world. And Mars is the destroyer. 
Mars is going there to take, not to give. So uh, there will be looting. There will be, you know, financial manipulations. Probably there will be danger of having financial problems. Again, Jupiter will save the day as he is present. But also the attempts of financial uh, manipulation and destruction will be much greater in scale than in other times. Uh, so this will be a very interesting day on the markets, I guess. Uh, everyone has to, who is related to the trade, probably is good to watch it closely. And not to risk it, I guess. So, in addition, Mars with Aldebaran may show danger for wealthy people. Or people who are uh, holding the, the power in their countries simply because of their wealth. There are such people. Those times will be not so great for them. The next couple of days, especially for the coast. There are so many other important things. Let's 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 give uh, attention to some This is a fortunate person to travel and Sorry. Hello. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I, the recording cut off. I my yeah. Mercury starts his retrograde phase slowly, <laughs> so this will be evident, obviously. Uh, right now, today, seven days before Mercury turns retrograde. So, uh, as I said, Mercury and Venus conjunction 8th of August, a day that can be very pleasant for everyone, and it's better day for traveling than other days in August. Mm. On the 16th of August, Mars is square to Saturn. I don't see your camera. Here we go. So, 16th of August, Mars is square to Saturn. And, uh, of course, this is the challenging time for people uh, related to Mars. Of course, uh, any interaction between Saturn and Mars brings dangers around the world for uh, various uh, troubles to happen, like accidents, attacks, collapses of buildings, even earthquakes. But this is, of course, just a probability. I'm not focusing right now exactly where those things will happen. But as you can imagine, 16th of August is a much more challenging time. In general, the whole time between 14th of August and 19th is full with challenging aspects. So I propose that people are not making their first steps in anything else uh, new. And only if they have to, only if you have to do something then. Even on between the 13th and the 15th, the moon will be in Scorpio. And this is additional tension as the moon is in a uh, challenging sign. And later, on the 25th of August, Venus will go out. She will go out of Leo. And then she enters Virgo, which is a sign of her debilitation. She is not considered to be well. Posited in Virgo. So for around a month, Venus will be weak. The beginning of her weakness 
is 25th of uh, August, but she already has travels 19th of August, so we can imagine that only the first half of August is good for Venus and Venusian activities. And in sort, and later, there will be a need of a lot of additional like attention. Uh, but don't worry, Venus will get stronger in September. Much stronger. Uh, also, the last thing that I want to discuss this is so many things, right? You can see the if I if I only focus a little bit, and there are so many things. And this month is rich in aspects. Finally, 28th of August, you already know the day when Mercury turns direct. But on the same day, Mars goes under the rulership of Mercury. This seems to uh, make Mercury more dangerous, by the way, because not only he is turning and late, later rising with the Hydra and the jaw of the lion. So he already is, you know, with some bad mood, so I'd say. But also, yeah, he is like an angry person who has also some, you know, small army on his uh, side. So, uh, so he can be dangerous. The strength of Mars is under the control of Mercury from the end of August. Uh, and so when Mercury is rising in this way and Mars enters Gemini, uh, there is a probability, much greater probability of accidents on the roads. This is what consumers common people. Be careful on the road in the end of August. It's much more challenging time for traveling. Uh, of course, for the rest of the Mercury, things like negotiation and trade, this will be a uh, more trying and challenging time. Now, when Mars enters Gemini, he enters for a long time. What I mean, he will enter in Gemini, 28th of August, and will stay till around 22nd of October, which is a normal length. But uh, the thing is that he later will return to Gemini. He will return 18th of January till the beginning of the spring again in Gemini. So all the people who have rising sign Gemini, and of course, Gemini concerns intellectuals, people uh, working with their minds, etc. Uh, Mars in Gemini will give, of course, much greater need of action on intellectual level. It, it will give the energy needed, but also it will give nervous problems sometimes, communication problems. It can give for Gemini rising, it can give a much more uh, intense work activity, but also uh, it's necessary to watch out health-wise because Mars rules the house of health. So for people uh, who are born with Gemini rising, the time uh, is coming that they should give great attention to health and work. If they give attention, they will have good results and they will achieve greater independence and overall uh, they, in, uh, they, they will achieve their goals in general because Mars also rules their 11th house. So, but only if they are inactive, then they will just go into a time of conflicts with colleagues, co-workers, friends, and so on. So now Mars gives them the torch of power, and if they use it, okay, but if not, and even if they do a little bit, there will be some uh, more conflicting and trying times. It's important because it is a long period. This concerns also other signs, but we will talk in the other, in, about the other months, about what, who else is also involved. And so, as you can see, Venus is weakening, Mars is becoming more active, and with uh, good and uh, challenging aspects. So the general direction of the mount is uh, more activity and uh, less uh, less time for rest, I guess. That's not too bad. <laughs> When you present it like that, more activity, not so much rest <laughs> and pleasures, but. 
Yes, I'm trying to be soft here because otherwise I can, you know, scare someone. But this is the, so the situation. After all, uh, now then it means that people just need to be more active in whatever they need to do. The, the time for uh, having a good time, like vacations, etc., is best until the middle of August. After that, get to work. <laughs> After that, it will be more complex. Okay, challenging point. Challenging point, especially between the 10th and 20th. So, all people, let's see what to be there for each one of us. Uh, those configurations will affect each and every one. So, I wish you to have not only interesting, but also a good and pleasant month. Thank you so much, Trifon, again for your contribution. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you'd like to contact Trifon, I'm putting in the description link uh, to his contact information. And thank you. Looking forward to seeing you again, Trifon. Thank you.